God said he among he, he God amongst all gods, right? Gods amongst all gods. So who is God? God is the most high God of the Israelites. You got it wrong right now. No, I'm gonna He's go to the, the Bible. God. See, you got it wrong He's, right he now. is the most high God. There are no other He's gods. The God. Listen, so, God says brother, brother, he congregates say, amongst all gods. Brother, so I feel I'm a okay, God. Okay, hold on. Where does it say that? Where does, it, where does it say in the Bible that God says he congregates with all gods? Bring it out. I, I ain't got my Bible, but I will show it to you. Matter okay, of fact, I ain't got to so, show it to you. I go buy a so, pack of cigarettes. Matter of fact, I'm going to go buy a pack of cigarettes. But you getting a cigarette, you're going to defile your body. So now the brother's confusion with the Bible. The brother's confusion with the Bible is this, right? He says that the Bible, he claims that the Bible says that God congregates with all gods. Bring it out. Let's see what God says about the other gods that the nations worship. Bring Give me out. Psalms chapter 96 verse 5. Bring it out. So our job, my brother, what's your name real quick? Juan. Juan. Juan, I'm Gamliel. That's your son? Yep. All pray, you look just like you. All pray, that's a beautiful thing. What's your, what's your name, bro? Juan, that's a beautiful thing. All pray, so this is what the Bible says about the other gods that the nations worship. Read. Psalms 96 verse 5. For all the gods of the nations are idols. So God says that all the gods of the other nations are idols. Bring it out. So that debunks what that brother was saying that God congregates with all other gods. That's a lie. That's a man-made philosophy. What? But according to the Bible, all those other gods that we see on the earth, Krishna, Vishnu, um, the Unk, Allah, Ra, all of those quote-unquote gods, they're all idols. Why? Because they were made by man. They were fashioned after man's hands. But the Most High God dwells in the heavens. And he's the Most High God of the Israelites in no other nation. So this is our power. You have to understand that. It's our power to know who our creator is. It's our power to know that we're made in his image. The nations don't want us to know that. So going back to what the officer was saying, when they had us in slavery, they weren't keeping the newspaper and the magazines away from us. It was mainly this Bible. Why? Because they, they know that this is our heritage. When we come back to the Bible, we understand that one of the laws for the man, you understand, one of the laws for men, for Israelite men, is to grow their beard. Why? You know why? Because the because the beard is a badge of manly dignity. Right. It separates us from the other nations. It might be a fashion trend now in the world, you understand, but that's a commandment from God. So that's why in slavery, they didn't let us grow our beards. You understand? They didn't let us practice our customs. So it's, it's on us to come back to the Bible and to read it for ourselves. Don't just take our words for it. You understand? What's your name, bro? My brother, what's your name? Jesse. Jesse, what's your nationality? From Guam. From Guam? Yes, sir. From Guam, okay, okay. So, he from over there? Yeah. Okay. So, what, what we're doing right now, what we're doing right now, you understand, is we're teaching our history from the Bible. You understand? Do you believe in the Bible? Do you believe in the Bible? What have you been taught about the Bible? What's something that you learned? Did you go to church? What did you learn in church? I'm just, sorry? Just religion, man. Religion? What's what's one thing? When's the last time you've been to church? It's been a while, bro. Okay, a couple years? Yeah. When's the last time you've been to church? Been a long time. So what's one of the last things you remember hearing when you went to church? Obedience, man. Obedience. Man. Obedient. Obedience to who? Ah. Okay, ah, how ah. how do we show how do we show obedience to God? What does it mean to be righteous? Let's get that, Deuteronomy 6. Because what, we, what you're going to understand here, right? We're not like the Christian church where we're just going to give you a sermon all day. Everything that we say is going to be based on the Bible. We're going to read verse for verse, and we're going to touch on the issues in our community. You understand? Read what you got. Deuteronomy 6, verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he has commanded us. So you know what this translates to, Jesse? This translates to our heritage. You know why? Read it again from the top. And it shall be our righteousness. It shall be whose righteousness? Our righteousness. This shall be our righteousness. This is possessive. 
These commandments were not given to the other nations. These commandments were given to the Israelites. That's right. So that's what it means to be righteous is to keep God's commandments. You understand? So one of the ways, right, how we show obedience to God. Did you know that God gave us a dietary law? So, again, that's something that they don't teach in the church. I'm sorry? Was that a part of keeping the covenant? The reason why that was. They captured the land and all that. Break I'm, that I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Say that again. Say that part again. They held a captive land for 400 years and all that stuff. I want to hear that. You want to, so you want to hear about the slavery? Not keep, no, not slavery. Not keeping, not following God. You understand? Okay, so let me, let, me, let me rephrase this so I can understand what you're saying. So basically what you're asking is, because we didn't keep the dietary law, is that why we went into a captive land for 400 years? Is that one of the reasons why? Yes. Yes, I'm going to read that for you now. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Bring it on. Again, everything is coming out of the Bible. Why do we go into slavery in a foreign land for 400 years? Why are we going to slavery on slave ships? Why were our children taken from us? Why are we called niggas and spicks in, the, in today? Because we did not keep God's commandments. Read. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Yeah. But it shall come to pass, if you, thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So when it says it shall come to pass, meaning what? This was a future prophecy. This was written thousands of years ago, thousands of years ago by the prophet Moses. Prophesying what would happen to the Israelites if we didn't keep God's commandments. Moses. Read, yes. To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So what Moses was telling the Israelites at this time is that what? If you don't keep God's commandments in the latter time, meaning today's time, if you don't keep God's commandments, curses will come upon you as a people. So now going back to what you were asking about, which one is the slavery? Which one is the slavery? The slave trade. So now, right, going back because our people need imagery. Without imagery, our people are lost. You can talk about it all day, but you got to show the people. That's what we're here to do, to show, to bring the reality to our people. So when you look at these things and you see us on the slave ships, stacked up like sardines, when you see the routes that they took us and where they dropped us off at, this is prophesied in the Bible. So I'm going to get straight to the point. Give me verse 68. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So now when you read the word Egypt in the Bible, it's synonymous with bondage or slavery. Right. So now God is saying, what? Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So now God is saying, I'm going to bring you into Egypt again with ships. He, he was not talking about the landmass of Egypt that you see right here. Why? Because we had already had our exile from Egypt. You understand with the Passover when Moses split the Red Sea that already happened right. so now when he's saying I'm gonna bring you into Egypt again what is that talking about when we were in Egypt understand we're not the Egyptians there's a difference we were their slaves when we were in Egypt you understand so now when God says he's going to bring us into Egypt again he's saying I'm going to bring you into slavery again with what with ships with Cargo slave ships. Right. So when, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? 35. So we're around the same age. So when we were younger, they showed us those those movies during Black History Month, quote unquote, right? They showed us the movie Roots and 12 Years of Slaves and things like that. But today they're not teaching those things to our children. You understand, sis? So what we're going over right now, because the brother asked this, that what? Let me ask you a question. Do you believe in the Bible? Kind of. Okay. Well, what, we, what we're doing right here is we're reading out of the Bible and we're showing the conditions of our people and how we got to this state as a people. Do you think it's a coincidence that the majority of black people live in the projects? You understand? That those things are prophesied in the Bible as to why we're there. So what we're showing right now is that what? We're showing the slavery that happened to us as a people and why it happened.
club was that at? <laughs> that was admit that uh, a lot of people don't even realize they I've called her, she hasn't responded. I've called her more than a few times. But the Zulu nation, I'm like, what the hell is this? I know nobody know what I'm talking about. You'll leave me on the island by myself. I don't know what the hell Bishop's talking about. That's what y'all do. Then after class, yeah, I knew what you were talking about. I just don't want to be caught out there. The hell is this? Get on my damn nerves. So read that again. because of our disobedience to God's commandments. Because we didn't keep God's commandments like the Sabbath day, because women wanted to dress out of order, because men didn't want to, uh, to take care of their wife and their children and leave and sell drugs and have hatred towards one another, that is why we are destroyed as a people today. So the, the solution to our problems ultimately is to repent. Right. Repent meaning what? Show remorse for your sins and turn back to God. That is what we're out here to do, to show our people the truth of the Bible, that slavery was not coincidence. Slavery, exactly, thank you. Slavery was not an accident. It was prophesied by God. Let's read it again, verse 15. Verse 15. But, it's Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. So, just so you can understand, do you read the Bible? How often would you say? Once a week, twice a week? Oh, oh, after you come back from school? Okay, cool. What are you in school for? I'm studying liberal arts. Liberal arts? Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, the book of Deuteronomy, right? This is the fourth book in the Bible. We're reading Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Read. Bring it out! But it shall come to pass that thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So, Moses is saying it will come to pass, meaning it's a future prophecy, if we did not listen to the voice of God, meaning listen to his commandments, his Bible, read. To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So that curses will befall us as a people. So what we have to first realize is that what? That blacks and Latinos in 2022 are still cursed by God. Why? Because we're not keeping his commandments. You understand? So that's our point. How y'all doing, sisters? What's your name? I'm Destiny. Destiny? Okay, what's your name, sis? Chantel. I'm Gabriel. So what we're going over right now is the curses that have befallen blacks and Latinos, and we're giving our people the solution. You understand? Do you think that black people are cursed today? 2022. Can you give me an example? Can somebody give me an example of black people being cursed today? I'll give you one. Give me verse 16. Verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. So the Bible says that blacks and Latinos, the Israelites, are cursed in the city. You know how? Because we live in project housing. Because we're subject to payments. We, we have to sell drugs to one another to make ends meet. We have to rob one another to make ends meet. We have pestilence in our communities. You know what pestilence means? Disease. Bring it up. COVID. COVID. That wasn't an accident. COVID was strategized by the Most High God as a punishment for, towards the world. Believe it or not, that's in the Bible that pestilence would befall the world. But you know, but you know what another form of pestilence is? Rats and roaches in our community, all throughout the projects. Right. Drugs, all throughout the projects. Crackheads, all throughout the projects. The dope boy riding through with his nice car, making sure that everybody's making, selling his drugs. Right. Those are the things that are going on in our community. Right. Give me another one, give me verse 37. Verse 37, and now I become an astonishment, a proverb, and a rivalry. You know why the Bible says you can't get out of Gotta get your daughter from school. Let me let me give you one last let me give you one last commandment. So do you believe the Bible? 
do? You believe in God. All praises. Do you be, so just so you can understand, to believe it requires an action behind it. That's right. So first you, you know what sin is? So I'm going to give you two verses before you go, all right? Because we just read that the reason that the Israelites are cursed today, can you put this back? Thank you. The reason that the Israelites are cursed today is why? Because we broke God's commandments. That's why we're, we're in astonishment of a, a proverb and a byword. The astonishment is that we were once a royal people and now we're at the bottom. The byword is that what? We're called outside of our God-given nationality. Right. The so-called blacks in America today, they're not black. They're not African-American. Right. They're from the tribe of Judah. They're right. Israelites. Right. What's your nationality? I'm just mixed. Black What's, and white. Okay. What's your father's nationality? Black from America? So, okay. Point, point case, right? According to the Bible, you're not just black. You're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Yes, so, that's, if, if there's anything that you take from today, know that your nationality is not black or mixed. Know that your nationality is you're an Israelite from the particular t tribe of Judah. So now, going back to the commandments, what is sin? Read. First John chapter 3 verse 4. Right? Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So the point transgress, when you read in this verse, the word transgress means to break. So when you break the commandments, that is a sin. You understand? So to make it a little bit more plain, right? Because sometimes we're not familiar with these words transgress and sin. That's not really in our vocabulary. But crime is a sin. Right. Selling drugs is a sin. Right. Prostitution is a sin. Right. Gang banging is a sin. Right. Right. Having hatred. If I if I say, yo, I can't stand this nigga over there. That's a sin. You know why? Because that's murder according to the Bible. To right. have hatred in my heart towards my brother. So now another sin that many of our people are unaware of is that there is a dress code for men and women. Right. So before y'all go, I want to give y'all this last verse. Give me Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. Right. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Uh -huh. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Right. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. What's an abomination? Can you give me like a, like a random example? I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna. Go, I'm going to give you a tangible example, right? A tangible example of something abominable or just disgusting would be like a bowl of vomit, right? Would you want a bowl of vomit in front of you? If they say, okay, time to eat, and you get a bowl of someone's vomit, that's that's. But um, that's an that's an example of an abomination. Would be something detestable, something that's grotesque and nasty. So read it again from the top. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. Right. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So right there, God is addressing the woman. He says that the woman shall not wear that which pertains or belongs to a man. Right. This is talking about an article of clothing. And I'm going to make it plain to you. It's talking about pants. Right. You know? So is this an article of a man's clothing? Yes. That's not that is? Yes. 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 Pants. Pants. Whether whether it's whether it's female pants or apple bottom pants, I know that's so kind of so old. I should have a dress on. You should have a dress on. You know why? Though? You know why? Because God calls us a special people. We are royalty. We are the children of the Most High God. That's, that's right. right. Kings and princesses, kings, priests, and princesses. That's what God calls us. So now when He sees us wearing the attire of the other nations or going against His commandments. That's displeasing to God. You understand? So, will we re go back to that verse real quick. I want to finish it off so you can understand what it's talking about. Here. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Right, so now, we, we went over the example of something uh, of, of an abomination, which is like a nasty thing. So God basically calls a woman wearing men's attire, which would be pants, or a man wearing woman's attire, which would be a dress, he calls that an abomination. It's not like that. And to make it plain, that's the sin that many of our people are in. So now, yes. But I want to give you one last You should go put a dress on. You should make haste. You can do that. A dress? A dress. 
But you know why, sis? Because God says that the woman should be adorned in modest apparel. That's right. Because your body should not be displayed to ev for everyone to see. Right. Some women, think about it like this, right? Hey, can I ask a question? Yes, of course. What do you call this that y'all wear? This is a garment. It's not a dress. Just call it a garment. No, I know it's not a dress. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how we're men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.